One issue you might run into with your ESP32 projects is how to avoid hard coding your Wi-Fi details into your sketch. This is a problem if you want to bring your project somewhere new, as it won't be able to connect to the Wi-Fi. It's also an issue if you want to give away the project as a gift, or even sell it, as you can't have the end users changing the code to get it on their network. I think the best solution for this is to use a Wi-Fi manager. Wi-Fi Manager is a library you add to your project where if the ESP32 cannot connect to your Wi-Fi, it will host its own network that you connect to and then you can add your Wi-Fi details from the included web page. It is also extremely flexible and allows for other project configurations to be entered on the web page too. This is really useful for settings like API keys or server details and it means users can configure the project without having to change any code. And because the configurations are not part of the code anymore, it also enables sharing the binaries of your project. This is useful for over-the-air updates or using ESP web flashing, where you can flash an entire project directly from your browser. I'll talk about that more in a future video. The biggest challenge about using Wi-Fi Manager is because it's almost infinitely configurable, it makes it quite difficult to navigate your way through the documentation and the examples. So in this video, I'm going to go through the use cases, which I think will cover the majority of scenarios you might have. To install this, go to the Arduino Library Manager and search for Wi-Fi Manager and install the one by Zappu and Tabletronics. I just want to call out Tabletronics here as he seems to have taken over development of this project, so huge thanks to him for continuing to support it. And speaking of huge thanks, thanks to my GitHub sponsors, sorry for sneaking it in here, but most people leave by the end of the video, so I just want to give them their credit. The first use case we will look at is where you're using Wi-Fi Manager just to replace putting the SSID and Wi-Fi password in your sketch. We'll start with this simple example where all it does is connect to the Wi-Fi network and print the IP address. Swapping over to Wi-Fi Manager for this use case is actually really simple. Basically, all you need to do is replace Wi-Fi.begin with this code using Wi-Fi Manager.autoconnect. Your ESP32 will try connect to the last known Wi-Fi network, and if it fails, it will launch the config portal. When the config portal launches, you connect to that Wi-Fi network using your phone and enter in the Wi-Fi details. The ESP32 will then reboot and will connect to your existing Wi-Fi network. And that's it. You don't need to change anything else. Unfortunately, use case 2 is not this simple. Next, we'll take a look at a use case where you're configuring things other than just your Wi-Fi details. The first thing we need to do is create Wi-Fi Manager parameters for each of the custom configuration fields you want to have. We'll start with a regular text string one. The first parameter is the ID of the HTML element. It's not really important what it is, but it does need to be unique. The second parameter is the label that will be displayed before the input box. The third is the default value which should appear in the text box. If the user doesn't make any changes, this will be the value that is returned later. The fourth is the max length of the input string. There is also an optional fifth parameter that we'll take a look at in a minute. The next one is for numbers, and it is basically the exact same as the string one. The only difference is if there is a default value, you will need to convert it to a character array like this. Next, we'll take a look at how to add a checkbox. The first two parameters are the same as the previous ones but the third one is sort of different. It is the value that the Wi-Fi manager parameter will return if the checkbox is ticked. So it is fine to leave it as T even if you have multiple checkboxes. You will also notice that we are now using the fifth parameter. This is for adding custom HTML to that input object. If you're not really familiar with HTML, it's not really too important, but this is what we use to turn this element into a checkbox on the web page. I'm also using this to make the checkbox checked by default if required. You then need to add these Wi-Fi Manager parameters to Wi-Fi Manager. Now, when the config portal is launched, these additional config options will appear. Next, we need to handle these when the user is finished with the config portal. To get the value from one of the parameters, you use its getValue method. 
For the string, you'll want to either copy it into a character array like this, or you could create a string object from it either. For the number config, we're going to make use of a toy. No. A to I, ASCII to integer, which is a method for converting a string with number values to an integer. For the boolean, we're going to compare the value that the parameter returned. If the checkbox was ticked, the value should be t, like we said earlier. So now we successfully got the data from the user, but we don't want to have our user going through this every time, so we need to store it somewhere where it can get loaded on startup. For this, we are going to make use of spiffs, which is a file system that you can use to store information that will be retained across resets or even reprogramming the board. I'm using Arduino JSON to create a JSON file to store the user's configurations in. This is the file we'll read on startup so we can persist the user's settings. Wi-Fi Manager has a set save config callback method that gets called when the user saves their configurations. We'll use this to set a flag that enables saving the config file. No point saving it every time if nothing has changed. So this works as is. We are persisting the data across resets, but we have a problem. Up to this, the only way to launch the config portal was when the Wi-Fi failed to connect. But we now have options on the config page that we may need to change which are independent of the Wi-Fi. So for example, you might want to update an API key, but your Wi-Fi hasn't changed. So we need a new way of launching the config portal. Wi-Fi Manager has a start config portal method, which forces a config portal. And you could use a button press to call this, but my favorite option is making use of the reset button. Most dev boards have one and it will not take up any of your GPIOs, so it's pretty win-win. To use the reset button, we are going to use a library called Double Reset Detector. And what this library does is on startup, it tags an area of persistent memory and after a given amount of time, it removes this tag. The next time the ESP32 starts up, it will check this area of memory and if the tag is still there, it is considered a double reset. I will force the config portal in either of these two scenarios, if a double reset is detected, or if there is no config file found. If neither of these were a problem, I just use auto connect to make sure I can still connect to the Wi-Fi okay. One other thing you might find useful is you can get access to the SSID and IP address of the config portal using set AP callback. This might be useful if you want to display instructions on a screen to the user. For the final use case, I want to provide the user with a dropdown for selecting a day of the week. Wi-Fi Manager doesn't have support for something like this, but remember what I was saying about it being infinitely configurable? There are ways of getting this working. First, I'm creating some HTML for the label and the dropdown. This notation here is called a raw string literal and can be useful when embedding HTML code into your Arduino sketches as you don't need to escape the quotes like you normally would. If you want more information on this, I covered this in more detail in a previous video. I'm also adding some JavaScript here, which I'll get back to in a second. But one thing you might notice is I leave a placeholder on this line of JavaScript and I use a sprintf to put the current value for a day into it. When the web page loads on the user's browser, this will update the dropdown to have the current day selected by default. We could have done this by manipulating the HTML string, but the logic in our sketch would be way more complicated. We then use this block of HTML code to create a Wi-Fi manager parameter, but unlike the ones we looked at previously, Creating a Wi-Fi manager parameter like this does not support the getValue method when reading back the user's save config. There is a solution for this where you can extract the value from the web server, but I think you can simplify the flow a lot by using some JavaScript trickery. Hi, I'm in the middle of editing this video right now. So I've looked at the original way again, and the way I'm about to describe definitely isn't simpler but I can't get the original way to work. It's crashing when I try get the parameter from the web server. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what's the story, but this way it definitely does work. So I'm gonna leave this in.
I created a second Wi-Fi manager parameter, almost exactly like the number one we saw previously. This is also being used for the dropdown, and you'll see what I'm doing in a moment. If we go back to the JavaScript I mentioned earlier, the first important part is the onChange of the select element. This means every time the dropdown is changed by the user, the value of the selected option will be written to the second Wi-Fi manager parameter we just created. But we don't want the second parameter to be visible to the user, so these lines of JavaScript sets its visibility to be false. Now when it comes time to save the configuration from the user, all we need to do is use get value on the hidden parameter and you get access to what day was selected. You should note that this isn't the only Wi-Fi manager library, there are some alternatives out there to achieve the same thing. Some of the more notable ones are written by Koi Huang. The basic version by Koi is ESP Wi-Fi Manager, which is very similar to this Wi-Fi Manager, but its documentation was actually a little bit better at the time I was comparing them. It still had the same challenges with how configurable it is and how easy it is to get what you want working though. To be honest, the reason this video is not about that library is that I was running into some issues with Flickr on one of my Matrix projects while I was testing it out. I can't imagine this was actually the library's fault, but I didn't have time to debug what was up and I got it working with the original Wi-Fi manager, so I just stuck with that. This was a few months ago though, so things may have changed even since then. Koi also has another Wi-Fi manager that makes use of the async web server library that looks really promising. But the libraries it is dependent on don't seem to be available on the library manager, and I didn't feel like shaving the axe of installing them manually, but it might well be worth checking out. Hopefully you found this video useful, and I've covered the majority of the use cases you'll have for Wi-Fi manager. If there was something I didn't, or you have some other suggestions, please do share them with us in the comments, or even better, feel free to join my Discord where you'll find a bunch of other like-minded makers to discuss with. As mentioned earlier, one of my next videos will be about the web flash tools, and it's actually something I'm really excited about. It's probably pretty niche in terms of who will make use of the information in that video, so I don't think it's going to be my breakout success, but from an end user point of view, being able to just connect your board to your PC and without having any libraries installed, you don't even need the Arduino IDE, being able to flash full projects directly from your browser is amazing. I'll see you next time. Sloan.